So today we're going to have a look at a program called LS Deluxe, which describes itself as the next-gen LS command. So let's have a look. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for LS Deluxe and on here it'll show you how to actually install it, so we'll just go down to that. If you're on Arch, it's in the standard repos, so you don't have to jump through any hoops to actually get it installed, you can just install it with Pac-Man. On Fedora, you can install it like that, Ubuntu, all of those different systems. There's even a snap pack available for it if you want to use it as a snap pack for some reason. And it is available with Homebrew, or you can just compile the Rust source code yourself. Now that that's out of the way, I'll show you guys what it actually does. We run LS Deluxe. So the command to run it is LSD. So basically what it does is nothing productive, but it looks really cool. So Pretty much what it does, it's inspired by a program called Color LS, which it talks about on the GitHub page. So Color LS, basically what it does is what its name says, it colors the LS command and a couple of other neat little aesthetic changes. That program is written in Ruby and as such, like with Python programs, is quite slow. So what LS Deluxe aims to do is basically does pretty much the same thing with a few neat changes and does it in a much quicker language. So. It doesn't do anything really extra from what LS does, besides look really cool. So, I don't believe it has a man page. No, it does not, but I believe it has a help. Yes, okay, so it does a lot of the same things that LS does, not everything, because we've run the man page for LS. We can see that there's a ton of things in here, but a lot of this stuff you're probably never going to use, but if you want to use it, it's still going to be there. So, back to this command. So. Say you want to do something like list out all of the hidden files as well as the regular files that are there. So you can do lsd-a and that'll list out the hidden files, that'll list out your the dot and the dot dot which are the links to go up and between or up folders and to the same folder. But like with ls you can do lsd-a uh, capital A and that will just not list out those two folder structures. And let's see, so what else do we have? So you can also do lsd-d, which will just list out the folder. I'm not actually sure what the point of this one is. Maybe someone's got some use for it, but I don't really know. And there's a bunch of other options in here. Like you can do things like sorting, time sorting. You can do lsd on one line. So that'll just list out pretty much the same way that it did with ls, where you have all of your different data points, I guess, on one line. And that's pretty much most of the stuff that you can do with it. So if you wanted to replace your default ls command like I've been doing, so before this video started, I actually had my regular ls replaced with ls deluxe. So the way that you would go about doing this, if you're using bash, you would make an alias in your bash rc. If you're using a different shell like z shell or something like that, whatever your rc configuration file is, you basically just use that. So if we bring up my bash RC, we can go have a look at the command that I was using for LS. So I don't just use LS by default, I have a couple of options with it. So I give it the dash H option, the dash capital A, which we saw before. So that was list all of the directories except for the folder structure directories. And then I like to have directories grouped first. So if we look at what dash H does, so if we put in LSD dash dash help, and go to dash H. Uh, that didn't come up for some reason. Oh, right, because it's, I, for some reason I thought it was a man page for a second. So this puts it in a human readable format. I don't actually remember what this did. I don't know why I've got this in here. I'm sure there was some reason that I put this on my LS command, but I don't know why. Because if I run it, it does the exact same thing in both versions. Maybe there was some compatibility reason at some point that I had it there. It was probably something to do with git bash probably, because I've had a lot of these commands since I was using git bash. So I don't know why it's there. Apart from that, group directories basically just puts those first. And now that I've got that set up there, now instead of running the regular ls command, when I run ls, then if I bring up a new terminal, so it reloads my bash rc, we run ls. Now we've got lsd set as our basic ls command. So you may have noticed the little folder icons and the git icon. So the thing about that is you're going to need to actually modify your terminal font. So this is one of the benefits of using something like ST because it has the option of using backup fonts. So I can continue using source code pro medium 
And these folder icons and these other icons all come from a font called, uh, I believe it was Hack Nerd Font Pro or something. I'll check my ST folder. So if we go, go RS, what was it called? Config. It is, yeah, Hack Nerd Font. So that's where all of those fonts are coming, or all of those glyphs are coming from. So if you're using another font, or if you're using another terminal that doesn't support backup fonts, you're gonna have to change your font to this font to get all of the proper icons. It does also say on the GitHub page that you can use Font Awesome, but I noticed that it's missing a couple of the glyphs that you need. So the only font that I've seen that actually works is this font. So that's the only issue with it really. But you also have the, I didn't show this before, but if we go lsd-help again, and if we change the icon theme, you can switch it over to Unicode icons, and you may have better support with different fonts then, but I'm not sure, I haven't tried other fonts. The only font I know that works perfectly is Hack Nerd font. I don't know what terminals support backup font. The only one that I know that does is ST. So I guess, check out my ST series and learn how to set that up. I haven't done the video on backup fonts yet, but I'll get to it at some point. So I guess the one last cool option that I can show off with this program is the tree option. So if we bring up another terminal, cause I don't feel like closing those, I could, but I'm lazy. So if we just go into a smaller folder than my home folder and we do ls dash dash tree, then it brings up a tree structure. I'm pretty sure the default ls command does this as well, but this just looks a little prettier. So. You may have noticed over this entire video, I didn't really go over anything that'll make your system any quicker. This is probably slower than the default ls command. It doesn't really do anything else besides be an ls command that looks pretty cool. And really that's all it needs to do. It's not the most minimalist program that you could run and it's not the quickest program you could run, but you know what? It makes your terminal look just that little bit cooler and that's good enough for me. I'm running it as my default LS command because I think it looks really cool. And yeah, if you guys wanna run it as well, then I showed off how to install it at the start of the video and pretty much, yeah, it's a cool command. Help the guys out over on the GitHub if you wanna support the project and that's pretty much it. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see next time. If you got any other cool programs you think I should check out and then let me know about those and I'll check them out maybe. And if you wanna see more from my channel, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell icon below and maybe you'll see updates, maybe you won't, depending on how YouTube feels today. But if you don't see updates, then go check out my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably see updates there. I post video updates there daily, so whenever I post a new video, I'll post there and you'll probably see it there, probably. I, haven't, I don't think I've been shadow banned. I haven't said anything on Twitter to get shadow banned at this point. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.